Something seems to be brewing, and you could almost say that it's destiny coming for us. <laughs> It's been a good while since I made a video about commentary as a genre. My previous one being almost a year ago now, being my favourite topic to date and being my most original idea. It's definitely not all ironic and I can't take a joke. This time I thought I would look back into this idea of commentating about commentary by making a video about something that I've noticed as a partial problem on this platform. But not a major issue per se, depending on who you ask. That issue is the importance of learning from your own and other people's mistakes. How about we begin with this mess? <laughs> By the way, my apologies for the amateur audio, I got a new professional microphone, and I don't really know how it works. <laughs> Alright, how's it going on lads? Welcome back to the channel owned by a guy that seems to get to every video topic only three years too late. <laughs> you know what, my upload schedule is so bad you could write three rewired soul books in the time that it takes me to get a video out. Alright, alright, I'm waffling here. Recently I came across a video by Simeon Jimmy, formerly known as Monkey Jones, about his experience with Nerd City. When I say recently, I mean as soon as it came out a few months ago. <laughs> it intrigued me because I personally have never had any issues with the guy and so I was curious to see what the video was. In the end, the video brought up a very interesting point. Tyler mentioned that it turned out that Nerd City had been nothing but good to him and that videos with that title had always seemed to be negative exposés. Typically on YouTube, when you see a video with a title and thumbnail similar to this one, you likely assume it's either going to be a drama video, but personally, I've never seen a video exposing somebody's true colors as actually being good. He made a good point, I've never seen any videos exposing somebody as a good person unless it was some ten-year-old Jake Pauler defending his dad from some nonce accusations. Oh, thanks, Jock. Or alternatively, Shane Dawson trying to rectify that hater once. <laughs> When expose videos are made, people are likely to only see the first part. A couple of examples, I've encountered several people that think James Charles is still under fire, and I know that there are many people that think Slazo still deserves to be stopped. There are things that happen to people that cannot be undone, and that is what they're known for. Heck, on James Charles' Wikipedia page, the third section is about his controversies. Drama videos are usually only interesting to most people when somebody doesn't come out alright in the end. I like to go by the narrative that redemption is a possibility. I want to allow room for improvement. Everybody deserves good if they do the right thing. But it is difficult when the only videos that do well are the ones criticising others. Like I said in my commentary effect video, it's entertainment so it's alright. I guess this is a personal preference. I mean, I personally wouldn't want to be in a position where I'm only known for being in a controversy. Even though most people know me for that reddit controversy I had once but- Expose A videos can most notably ruin a person's career as they're meant to do. Clearly. The worst part is that it can have a lifelong effect. If a person makes a mistake, it's detrimental. When you have a big audience, you're doing everything in the spotlight. And I mean everything. Heck, Justin Bieber can't go for a bath in private without having his nudes. Granted, that is a weird example, but I don't care. YouTubers with a large fan base are almost exactly like ordinary people. If ordinary consisted of having a huge ego and talking to themselves for the majority of the day. <laughs> YouTubers are humans too, alright? That's something that you lot need to screw into your little heads. <laughs> Let me tell you a little fun fact. Humans, get this, make mistakes. <laughs> Nobody is perfect and there are far too many famous people that have said something about that. So I thought therefore I would reference the CBBC show The Dumping Ground with that one time that they tried to get a new caretaker and the last said, well I do say nobody's perfect. Every time a YouTuber does a little bit of a dumb, everybody is out to get them. I addressed this rather strongly in my previous video, in fact I addressed it for 34 minutes and 12 seconds. <laughs> As said, YouTubers in particular are not very clever, the majority of them dropped out of school for goodness sake. You shouldn't expect them to make wise decisions. The issue arises when you combine the fact that they're always in the spotlight and that they're not very intelligent. In a sense, in my opinion, this explains why some forms of internet drama are so hilariously entertaining. Prince 
Lee, Susie, Lou, and have no idea what they're doing in terms of the lore or their content, which is why it's interesting to see videos on them. Now this all comes together to look at my problem with the genre that I find myself placed in. A long time ago, I watched an expose video about the YouTuber Rage Alexa, and that was in 2017. My opinion on the guy has not changed in any manner, despite him changing up his content completely to make it better than how it was at the time. Why am I like this? He's made his content better and probably could be entertaining if I gave him the chance. However, because of those videos I watched three years ago, I don't like him or his content. Heck, the video before this one was meant to be about Gary himself. <laughs> you see, criticism and negativity sticks harder than positive things. Also, it gets more views. <laughs> Which is why it's difficult to get out of a bad mood and easy to get out of a good one. Negativity sticks harder and there's no stopping that. Which is generally why I try not to be so harsh unless it's clearly a joke. When a YouTuber makes a mistake, there's almost no turning back. In the introduction, you probably noticed me use the word just destiny quite a large number of times. Perhaps the reason for this is because he's the perfect example of my point. Just Destiny did something extremely bad, alright, but he had no idea what he was doing. He didn't like being called a paedophile, so he decided to remove that criticism from the internet. It clearly angered him, but he did a bunch of bad stuff because of it. He filed a copyright strike, despite the video being taken down mainly for slander. He also sent a defamation letter from a fake location and tried to sue him in a country that he would not be able to fight in court for. I can't name anybody that defended him, honestly. You know what he's doing now, though? Making moderate content and being more of a genuine guy. He has tried to improve. Here's the catch though, I've seen people liking his tweets on Twitter and thought that it was wrong of them to support him. I know I am very stubborn. <laughs> it's only after watching the RFC After Hours that I realised that he did actually try to improve from the whole situation. I give him props for that obviously. But nobody other than that podcast has really pointed that out in video form. Now listen for a moment, there's no way to resolve this, I'm simply pointing out a flaw in this community. Mostly for entertainment, but also for some food for thought, so that you can improve on yourself, as opposed to the entire community, I guess. Just Destiny tried to redeem himself slowly, and that's not acknowledged enough. I give him my respects, but what about the many people that made videos about him expecting a response video? Now I thought, since I know the bloke, I'd ask LT Cobra on his opinions of Just Destiny. So oh shut up mate, I don't care. You really want me to answer your dumb question just to justify your stupid point? You're p pathetic mate. <laughs> you know who else has had a resurgence after making a pretty detrimental mistake that involved copyright? Pokimane. Pokey. <laughs> anyway, Pokimane, while being hated by the vocal minority of people, she's at least seemed like she's improved. <laughs> when the situation first went down, professional tweet reader Boblex uploaded a video of the Twitter fight between her and Keemstar. She copyright striked it because she didn't like her statements being publicised even more. So Fainted naturally uploaded a video on her blowing up his channel. <laughs> Honestly, at this point, they may as well rename all of these fit compilations to 30 minutes a female woman standing up. Now he just reads tweets as well. I'm gonna say, everybody that gets into drama with Pokemon reads tweets nowadays. I'm gonna strike this down, boys. I'm pretty sure Pokemon has not copyright strikes anyone since, which is good. And hardly anybody hates her. Only the vocal minority, of course. So I thought I would ask a person involved in this situation what they think of it. So, Boblax. Who are you and why am I here? Uh, no questions, just do what you do best, mate. Read the tweet. Alright, alright. It was a crazy situation, and I personally think she was in the wrong there. But I also think Cordwood is really hot. Wait, why did you put that in there? I said no questions, you don't need to know, okay? <laughs> Another example is the main man, the rewired soul himself. He was originally criticised by many persona on how his videos were bad because he wasn't a licensed therapist, claiming famous people had specific disorders, such as Trisha Paytas. Wait a second. Why do we hate this guy? Jokes aside, he did a heap of bad things, I think. Well enough to warrant half a dozen 40 minute documentaries on him, I guess. <laughs> While I openly admit that I don't necessarily agree with a lot of what he says, he seems like a nice guy and I certainly agree with him on the point that he has about YouTube and views and stuff. He does bring an interesting argument across there. Everybody does do YouTube for the views, I mean, admit it. He also writes some reasonable articles nowadays, not too awful to be honest, but his books are... Well, yeah, yeah, there's something. I do feel bad, though, because I made fun of his book for some jokes on a group chat, and, uh, he actually responded, which made me feel bad. Anyway, to summarise it all, he has started to listen to criticisms about his content. Nice. <laughs> 
Now speaking of this whole debacle, I thought I'd speak to the man himself and get his opinion on the controversy. Wait, who are you and what am I doing here? My final main example of people that have tried to improve is Keemstar, who I've already mentioned, of course. He said the N-word 10 years ago, which is EXTREMELY BAD, to be honest. It's not like people change over time and that there is context to the situation. <laughs> obviously not. Now, he has improved by, uh... Not saying the N-word in public again since. <laughs> right then. I mean, he does do a lot of dumb stuff and doesn't host a great show, but... Now it's time for some quick-fire attempted redemption stories. Turkey Tom was accused of being a racist. Because he, a while back, he was freely making anti-Semitic jokes, and... Guess what? He's toned it down now. Well done, mate. <laughs> Anision hasn't actually improved. I can't remember why I put him on here. Rice Gum at least tried to take criticism into account by parodying every criticism that was made against him. Didn't work though, because he's dumb. Alinity tries to clear her name over and over and over again. You clearly know how well that's going. <laughs> Koska's art and coffee break resolved their feud, and now people like them both. And finally, Zaptai tried to redeem himself numerous times with different twit longers, but they never seemed to work because people would still continue attacking him. Now, most of the people that I've mentioned up to now have attempted to redeem themselves. Unfortunately, though, it's extremely difficult to do this. As I've reiterated numerous times now, you can't redeem yourself fully ever, really. Now, this is a pretty massive problem for the people that get into drama or get exposed or whatever. Some people could never redeem themselves. The Rewired Soul probably can't, as much as he tries to do the right thing now. His videos do not make even close to the amount of views his videos made about him do. But there is a plus side to this whole debacle. This issue helps people be more likely to do the right thing in the correct situations. Hence why this video is about learning from other people's mistakes. You see, somebody can do something bad and illegal and they'll get criticised for it, but people will always be less likely to follow suit. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a good thing. <laughs>